Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and in today's video I want to talk about the new upcoming PvP changes that the developers talked about over on King's Isle Live yesterday. So basically they hosted a PvP punch out where basically it's where one school hits another school until they die and then whoever comes out on top is like the best in terms of the stats and the combat model. And while all this is going on, they're talking about the meta and changes they want to make in the future. And I probably will make another video in the future about everything we know about the big fall updates that's coming. But this video is just about what they talked over on that KI Live. So in that video, they talked about some things that are directly meta related. So that's going to be stuff like Triton, Stormzilla, Minotaur. I feel like a lot of players are kind of sensitive towards these cards because they're just really, really, really good at what they do. And the reason that it came up on King Siles radar is simply because everybody was packing it. These cards may not have been what the community has been complaining about, but they've seen it like pop up on their KI radar or whatever, and they want to address it. I would say generally the community is complaining a lot about balance right now, a lot about myth, and a little bit about storm currently. Jading and PvE ice complaints are still around as well, and they're pretty effective, unfortunately. But I think the Zilla, Minnow, and the Trajan changes that we'll be discussing here in a moment are really interesting and I think it will shake up the meta a lot in a healthy way in my opinion. So let's talk about them. So essentially what's going to happen guys is Triton, Minotaur, and Stormzilla are all going to lose their chromatic effects. This is going to make it so shield gambits are better and healing and dot play is better. Now shield gambit buff in of itself is very questionable because even with Minotaur in the game, they're still the best gambits in the game. So it's a little scary thinking that's going to be a thing. On the bright side of this point, we are right around the corner to the dual school buff that will be happening in the future. And if King Saw can properly buff dual school and actually make it so schools can reliably run fire and do damage with it. I don't think it'll be a big, big deal. The, you know, oppressiveness of the shield gambits, I want to say. But right now, if they were to put the update out tomorrow with the minutes iron nerf and not buffing dual school, we would just fall right back into a heavy, heavy shield gambit meta. So what I'm kind of hoping for is that they will wait until they buff dual school with these changes. Because honestly, bro... If they put this stuff out and buff the shield gambits like this, I am not going to be playing. It is already shield every turn simulator currently in the present day. I am not looking forward to more of that. So yeah, uh, I'll pass. Now let's talk about Triton and Stormzilla. So these were like the universal counters everyone would run. So, you know, a bounce would run Triton and Zilla, right? Um, a fire would run Triton and Zilla, right? Everybody would dual school up because it was really good. Anyways, the devs did not like this because they felt like it was too effective and stuff like that. So what they're going to do is make Triton and Stormzilla be Stormblades instead of Chromatic. So what's going to result in this, essentially, is deaths might run it still because they can like Gambit the Stormblade. But everyone else has no value with the Stormblade, right? It's a liability. So other players are going to have to shift and find different kind of, you know, dot and hot counterplay. And in the stream, when they were talking about this, a lot of PvP players were concerned, well, like, these are the only good counters in the game, right? You should not take away the only good counter in the game when there's no other good cards in the game. So essentially, the whole point of this stuff is for the devs to try and figure out what makes a card good and to incentivize players to go in different parts of you know schools and their library and their identity so i do understand both sides of the spectrum you know players are very concerned about the good cards that are getting removed and also people want to see more count counterplay so as much as i think stormzilla and Triton were like a necessary evil in the game in my opinion I am looking forward to seeing the meta shift and all because, you know, that's kind of what I'm here for. You know, I'm here for PvP updates, you know, not the same meta for 
a year or two. It's kind of boring to me. Anyways, the Stormblades will actually be getting buffed as compensation for this, which I think is uh, very interesting. So it's an indirect buff to Storm in a way. And they said they're open to either increasing the damage on the Stormzilla or the blades on the Stormzilla and whatnot, or the Triton, right? So we very well, very well might see 70 or 80% Triton blades, or we could keep the 60%, but see like a 100 damage increase just in general. So it depends. Personally, if I had to pick, I would choose damage. Uh, reason being is because when you're high rank, you have to be under the impression that everything you do that's going to be good is going to get countered. So I'd rather have more DPP on my, you know, counter card if the utility is just going to get countered anyways, you know. Also, another important part of this update, guys, is this is going to affect cards below rank 8 that are chromatic only related to traps and blades. So stuff like Thunder Snake, I think, and Bloodbat also uh, might lose their chromatic effects, maybe. But stuff like Myth King Artorias will still be chromatic, you know. Um, what else is there? Like Sirens would still be chromatic, stuff like that. All the high pip stuff. They essentially are doing this to try and slow down the pacing in the meta because Blades and Traps provide instant like acceleration and value. Um, they're not touching the stuff like Hots and Dots because that's not really too... It's not as much of a swing, you know what I mean? So yeah, I definitely think it's interesting for sure. I think this will help slow down the pacing while also healthily, you know, changing the meta. And I'm really, really excited for that and all. I'm a little concerned what players are going to have to do about Hots and Dots because I think that um, Dots are going to kind of go crazy in my opinion. Skeletal Pirate probably will be used, I want to say. Pirate's not bad. Dual school damage just needs to be better, in my opinion. But her dots, bro, like what people are gonna Earthwalker or like Gearhead or like Attrition. I don't know, dude. I think dots are kind of gonna go a little crazy. And the only schools now that can viably counter it is if you dual school Storm for Leviathan or you are a storm or a life that can Zilla and like Earthwalker. So we might be right around the corner to a dot meta. It's also very important to identify why players heavily invest into dot counters. And it's been this way for years, I think. Maybe since the time of time, I could be wrong. But um, basically, in case you guys don't know, fire damage over times are storm damage per pip. Okay, but the difference is a storm can just hit and do that damage obviously if we exclude shields and weaknesses right but a fire has to you know send it the dot and pray it doesn't get countered and if it doesn't get countered okay well that's amazing storm damage from pip but uh if it does get countered well you're just kind of screwed and you would have rather not have done that right so that's kind of why people just super set for dots because if you counter it it's such a bad move but if you don't counter it, the world is probably going to end because it's that storm damage for Pip we're talking about. But yeah, I think I covered everything in this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something new. Let me know your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. Uh, are you excited for the meta to change? Do you think this is stupid? What would you have done differently? I think it's great that they're trying to look and identify what cards they can make better in the libraries and stuff like that. And some cards that may be a little too good because... Realistically, we should be in a world where not everyone just packs Stormzilla. It should be equal across the board whether I pack like Earthwalker or Stormzilla, right? Depending on my school identity and what I can synergize with, right? But everyone just defaults on like Traithan and Stormzilla, right? So, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's as bad as people are making it out to be. I think some people are overreacting a little bit, but I definitely, definitely am concerned about, you know, Hots and Dots being meta. I also think life will be number one if this update goes out and we'll see a big rise of shield gambit play um, if we do not get the dual school buff in the same update. So that's what I think is going to happen. That's my thoughts. That's the feedback. And I will see you guys on the next one. Leave a like and sub if you made it this far. Thank you for watching and take care, y'all.